Okay, it's a functioning guitar. Um, there is a problem. Hey everybody, welcome back. Um, well, it's technically a functioning guitar. But, well, let's just look at this. Um, I gotta do this fast because I have to get the tension off of this. Um, as you can tell, um, strung up to pitch, my string action is a little high. And if we come up here to where the sound hole is, we are easily at over three quarters of an inch. All right, I have greatly decreased the amount of string tension on this instrument. Let's see how the action has uh, recovered. Well, apparently it hasn't. If you're ever at a store and you can see things between the strings and the fingerboard like a car, someone's entire face, the action might be a little too high. So this is it's not many times when I say this. I don't think we can save this one. Bought this guitar so that we can learn from it. This is a PV uh, Clarksdale. It is part of the PV Delta Blues guitar collection uh, that was uh, dismally successful uh, between 1998 and 2000. They only ran them for a couple of three years. These guitars are made in Korea. Um, from what I can find, there's very, very little out there. Um, it, I mean, they're obviously aimed at the student market. Uh, it's got a 25-inch scale. I can't find anywhere that talks about what they're made of, what the neck is, the sides and the back, the top. Um, but the good news is, uh, we are going to, <laughs> to examine this guitar would be an understatement. Um, so we're going to give it the standard intake inspection like uh, we do when anything comes into the shop. Um, we're going to get the paperwork out and we're going to note the things that we notice that might need to be tweaked a little bit. Uh, and then we're going to, um, we'll do the macro examination, we'll do the micro examination, we're going to look uh, on the inside of it as it is presented, and um, then I've got a, and then it's going to get fun. Um, so let's do that. Let's start off here at the top. This is how the instrument presents to us. We're going to move up here to the body and you can see where this instrument has gone like this down here. Um, I can feel the glue joint right there. I can, I can run my finger across there and I can feel that. Now we will turn it this way where you can maybe appreciate the caving in that we have going on here. Um, I've, I've released the tension off of that and this is still like this. Um, I have some miscellaneous kind of longitudinal cracks. Um, we'll inspect it a little later to see if this is a solid wood side or if it's some kind of high pressure laminate which would be my guess because this is like a $200 $300, $400 guitar at the most. It's a, a definitely a beginner market kind of instrument. Kind of a surface poop going on here. This is really kind of, this has probably been dropped at some point, or is this 
Mm, that looks like it's been patched in manufacture. Because um, I can feel it and I can see where it has been it's been filled with something. Um, just some general buckle rash going on here. So there's the back. Uh, the neck seems to be intact. Far away view. Now let's zoom in and we're going to look at this thing and we'll see how really ugly it is. Here is the uh, PV Block logo. These guitars were made for two years. Um, 1998 to 2000. It may have bled over with some stock into into 2001 or so. It was originally there were three guitars. They added I think four more. Successful is not the word that comes to mind. We've got like a chip Sorry for seeing my big head. This appears to be a bone nut, but this has got a this has got a big divot in here. I don't like that. There's a lot about this guitar I don't like. Um, the fingerboard's in pretty decent shape. There really isn't any fret where it's just dirty. Now, yeah, how's that? Isn't that nice? We can see this is broken here. The plastic didn't break on um, the rosette, but you can see where it deformed. And again, that's these jagged pieces, this kind of deformed plastic looking stuff here. This all leads me to believe that this was a shock event. This was, I don't know somebody hit somebody over the head with it or somebody stepped on it or I don't know um, that and six dollars will get you a crappy cup of coffee somewhere um, but it is it is the uh, ugly uh, looking thing we can see a little bit of this big block we will uh, we'll get the cam out and we'll look at that a little bit later but you can see if this is one big piece of wood that is this big in size and this was all driven down there is actually a pretty there's a ding there there's a pretty decent kind of a scuff right there so I don't know maybe that's maybe that's the contact point there but if that whole block was driven backwards then that is probably going to that's why we have that bulge on the back bridge everything's even but it's super low super low there's that ding I mentioned breaks the fibers on the top so we might be able to puff that out a little bit but probably not very much we got a ding in the binding uh, that has it looks like it came this way because the binding itself is pushed up and over this way. Um, that's the top. Sides, there's not really too much. There's a finished blob here, right along here. You can see where the binding is already. It's not really separating, it just doesn't look like it was finished right. I'm calling that a factory. I'm calling that a factory. So why would you have a seam in the middle of your your little end plate here? Well you wouldn't unless of course it was just a painted strip and that's what that is. That's not binding. That's not, it's, they just painted it. They masked it off and painted it. You can actually see where it bleeds on, it bleeds out of the, I don't know if they use tape or what. Very disappointing. Going back the other way, just some kind of surface dingage here. Same kind of poor fit and finish on the binding area here. Now let's see if we can, here, let's twist this around. So you got easy access to the upper frets because there's no heel to get in the way of your thumb but it should be flat it shouldn't look like that 
that's no bueno. So now let's look at the back. The back is just, there's nothing really remarkable about the back until you get to here. And here we've got four bolt, we've got four screws, bolts, we'll see. And then we've got this big hump here, again, where this block has moved and deformed the wood along with it. Should that be like that? The answer's no. All right, so let's take the strings off of this, and <laughs> this is going to be fun. We're going to look at the inside of it. All right, now, this may or may not be successful in any way, shape, or form. Let's take a look. Okay, so here is our big giant, big giant neck block. Here is this very odd darkness. Let's look up. You can see how the kerfing stops right there at the edge. There's the swell. Good grief! That washing machine sounds like a D6 Caterpillar. Um, and that's where the kerfing stops. Notice how teeny tiny that kerfing is. Ugh. And then, if I can get my light out of the way, here's that serious weirdness that is the gap between that brace, that brace that normally goes across the top part of the guitar, the fingerboard side of the guitar, and it is now you can see how it's not meeting. You can see the damage on the underside from the impact or whatever. Let's see if we can see anything down this direction. Tail block, tone bars, you know, they're rounded. X brace. It's got the big, yeah, it's got the little patch right there in the middle. So, you know, it's not, it's not terrible. So, uh, okay, you know what, that was that noise. Here we go. Okay, well that's kind of a weird gap, and then a weird, kind of like a weird, vertical brace, does that run up, that runs up each side of the sound hole, finger braces, Was it chewed up 
bottom part because nobody puts a backer block in when they drill out. Okay. That little teeny tiny curving. The So there's the other, and I'm probably not going to be able to get to see the side of that. You can see the damage on the top of that part of that soundboard there. That's just, is that two pieces of wood? I think it is. Okay, now I'm turned sideways. Let's see. So yeah, I'm. that looks like two pieces of wood in here. Okay, well, I'm just going to have to suck it up and buy a, buy an endoscope. Okay, so now we're looking at it on, okay, yeah, there's some separation there, it looks to be. And, well, and we're out. Okay. Well, too bad there isn't a better way that we could see the inside of this thing. Oh, wait. Hey, if you like this episode of Rattle Can Guitar Restorations, you might want to check this video out as well. Be sure to subscribe to us on YouTube, and if you'd like to help the channel grow, consider stepping over to our Patreon page and giving that a look. Y'all have a good weekend. Cheers.